You can lift a beam like this too, you know, if you make it out of foam like I did. Just for reference, here's a real steel beam that I got off a job site and they were going to throw away a bunch of these, so of course I had to grab some of them. They are significantly heavier, I can barely lift this one. Now you might be wondering why I'm actually doing this, and to be honest, that is a perfectly valid question. Long story short, we are opening up a makerspace in San Antonio, Texas, and we need some ceiling hung art. So I'm going to be making two of these beams and hanging them from fishing line to make them look like they're floating above you. I've got my foam and I'm doing some tests on it with spray paint. It has a clear plastic layer that, against my better judgment, I didn't pull off prior to assembling. My thinking was that it would prevent future spray paint from dissolving the foam, which it did do, kind of also caused lots of other problems down the road. So if you are planning on using this phone, even if you are planning on spray painting it, do yourself a favor and remove the plastic. The first step here is really boring. I'm just cutting stuff down to width. If you know anything about steel shapes and sizes, I'm roughly basing this off of a 10, W10 by 30 with a depth of 10.5 inches, width of 5.8 inches, and a flange thickness of half an inch. Where this gets a little bit off track is the web thickness, which should be 0.3 inches, but since this is foam, Foam, not steel I need that extra thickness to support it also 0.3 inch foam doesn't exist so there when you're cutting down foam either use a sharp blade or a table saw to cut it I use neither of those so consider this to be foreshadowing for future problems that I had now that our foam is cut to width we need a way to connect our individual pieces I'm gonna use a low gauge bailing wire cut down to about two inch sections my plan is to put one of these in the beam every foot or so just to help give it some rigidity at the joints. Before we assemble, I need to mark center so I know where to put the middle web piece. Then I'm going to add my little metal wire pieces. I'd use a flat block to press the wire down into the foam since it was stronger than I thought it would be, but it wasn't too much of a hassle. I'm leaving roughly half an inch of the wire out, basically the thickness of the foam, and it's helpful to use straight pieces because they can punch out the sides of the foam when you're pressing them down if you're not careful. Next we're going to need some liquid nails. I chose liquid nails because it's not very reactive and there's minimal foam shrinkage when it's applied. In order to get the look of more of like a beam, we need radius corners at the web to flange connections, so we're going to need a lot of liquid nails. I had a really old half tube of liquid nails that I broke into first that I'm just using a little putty knife to apply to the edges. Once it's coated, I'm going to line it up with the center line that I marked earlier and slowly just start lowering it down from one side and working my way to the other, making sure it's nice and straight. And to my surprise, it actually was able to hold itself up with just those little wire clips things, which is a really good sign. Once it's nice and straight, we can start adding more liquid nails to get those radius corners. I ended up fashioning a little jig out of leftover foam to help me get a consistent radius with the liquid nails. I don't think I got any footage of that though, so instead you get to watch me try to use a paper towel instead like a dum-dum. Once that side has had a chance to dry, I'm going to start with the upper flange, same process as before, add the wire, realize you need a break, so you go to Home Depot to buy a gallon of liquid nails, contemplate your life choices, you know, the usual. This top flange is really just about the same as the bottom, so I won't bore you with the assembly. It did start to get a little bit wobbly once I added that top piece, so I let, just let it sit to dry with some baskets holding it in place. And this is when I realized the clear plastic layer I mentioned was going to be an issue. It started lifting up in weird places, and over time the spray paint was not treating it well at all. It kind of curled up and shrunk, so I had to begin the process of removing the plastic off of the whole thing, which was not fun at all. But removing the plastic caused another issue. The foam reacts heavily to the spray paint, and I figured out something for this, but it did take me a while to come up with something that would actually work. In the meantime, though, I want to sand down the edges to make them nice and sharp. Going back to using a sharp box cutter or table saw to cut your foam, uh, you can see the damage I've done to my edges by using a doll blade. Sanding isn't going to fix all these holes, so I need to try something a little bit more heavy duty. I grabbed some Bondo and hoped that that wouldn't shrink the foam. Side note, why does this have to be called cream hardener? It's really creeping me out. This stuff smells like a mix between an awful chemical experiment and industrial despair, so wear gloves, a mask, and maybe a hazmat suit. It also has a very small working time, so once you mix it, get going on whatever it is you're doing. These Bondo scrapers I'm using are amazing, and they work perfectly to fill in those holes. Unfortunately, the Bondo does ever so slightly react with the foam and there is some shrinkage after it's dried. I'm glad I'm using Bondo on the edges still, even though it does shrink because it did stiffen it up a lot. 
um, but I do need to go over it again with a layer of liquid nails. This whole process took a lot longer than I thought it would. We finally have our beam looking like a beam. It now just needs some color, but since I can't spray paint it, what I found is that I can use a thick layer of latex paint to coat the beams, and that paint layer will protect the spray paint from coming in contact with the foam. And the latex paint won't react with the foam. It's kind of a weird workaround, but it works and I'm gonna go with it. Oh, and I also added some cute little bolt heads on one of the beams too. I made them with just some extra foam I had laying around and I just glued them in place. I still wasn't happy with those edges, so I went over them one more time with filler to see if I could get them flat. It kind of worked. My first step with the spray paint is to paint the whole thing black. Yes, I could have used black latex paint instead, but I only had white, so go ahead and yell at me in the comments. Even though I tested this beforehand, I was still worried that the spray paint would seep through somehow and shrink the foam, but it didn't for the most part, which was awesome. I bought this mirror or silver spray paint for the edges to make it look like a, it's a freshly cut beam. I'll come back though and rough it up a little bit later, but for now, this will work. Now for the rest of the colors, you'll need a bunch of different colors if you want your rusty steel to be realistic because there's a lot of color variation in rust and I wanna make this look as believable as possible. I'm using a couple different oranges, a dark brown, a red, or a dark red and a sparkly bronze color as well. Starting out, I'm laying a light base of orange over the whole thing and then my secret to getting this to work is using a spray bottle with an adjustable nozzle. The water will react to the spray paint and do all sorts of crazy awesome rust-like stuff. I start with a light spray over the whole area, paint a bright orange on top before it dries, cover that with uh, another orange color or more colors and then spray water on it again but with the nozzle spraying hard so that it removes the top layer of paint but not the bottom layer and that's really important it takes time uh, it takes some time to learn the right timing of all of this because you want that bottom layer more or less dry before you spray it but you want that top layer of paint to be quite wet still uh, when you spray it so that it does run off when you do spray it. I also like to use various tools to scra scrape at the wet paint. Right here I'm just using one of the spray paint lids to scrape at it. Here's where I'm spraying with the nozzle fully open so that that top layer of orange paint starts to peel off or drip down. And the big thing with this is variation. I used a whole lot of different techniques on this whole beam to see what worked and what didn't. And my best advice is just to experiment and see what different techniques do. This paper towel trick worked wonders for me and helped add a lot of texture that I otherwise was missing. I'm also trying to think about how rain would over time be sitting on the beam or running down it in, a, in different places if this were actually a beam that sat in the elements for a few years. So for instance, the top piece would probably have standing water on it, so I'm gonna treat it differently from the sides, which would most likely have water running down it instead. And in a way, I'm literally mimicking what the rain would do with the, my spray bottle. The water is pooling at the top and dripping down the sides, which is perfect. One trick I learned for the top surface is to paint the, both a dark and a light color together, and while they're both still wet, spray them hard with the water. That'll give a really cool, like a splattery look, kind of like if the beam sat under a gutter where it was dripped on constantly in one spot more than anywhere else. I had a lot of success with that, and honestly, th this is one of my favorite spots right here on the whole beam. You're also gonna get more of the bright orange color towards the middle of the beam, while other reds and browns and darker tones will be more towards the corners. Again, it's really just a bunch of trial and error. I didn't do any practice pieces or anything before I started this whole process because I knew that if I screwed something up, I could always just paint over it again. There were definitely areas where I thought something would be a good idea and it just didn't work out too well. So I just let it dry and started again. It's very forgiving that way. In order for it to look right, I highly recommend using at least two colors of orange. You'll need a really bright, vibrant one and a more dulled one. The bright one you can use uh, where you really want to emphasize the rust and the dull one can be used for basically everything else. But that bright orange really helps it pop in certain areas. And the drips from the bright orange just look absolutely fabulous. Another thing that I played around with was changing the distance between the paint and the beam. The further away the paint is, the more smooth it's gonna look. If you want a nice, rough, textured surface, Try spraying really close to the object and then hit it with some water. It'll give a really nice contrast and will keep things from looking too homogenous. It's starting to look really good. I'm really happy with it so far. Surprisingly, it actually looks more convincing from close up. When you zoom out, I'm kind of noticing that it's not 
as realistic, which is okay. Uh, it still is pretty convincing. I just thought it would be the other way around. I'm really surprised by that. Again, I'm just playing with different scraping materials. Whatever I have at my disposal, I'll probably end up using. I used the bottom of the spray paint can to give the top surface some cup rings, as if someone had left a glass on it or something for a long time. And then this was a total accident, but I'm kind of okay with it. All of the water that I used kind of pooled up on the plastic tarp uh, that I had sitting there and it lifted up some of the paint from other projects and with the beam sitting in that pool of water, it picked up some of the paint scraps from those other projects. It kind of looks like it used to be painted and that over time it's just fallen off and now there's only a memory of the paint that's left behind. I don't know, I like it and that's what matters. I came back to the ends to rough them up a little bit. I'm using just a little triangular file to scrape away the silver and make it look like it's just been cut. And of course it wouldn't be a beam if it wasn't labeled, so I used some chalk and I wrote out W10 by 30. Well, I wrote 36 here, but I fixed that later. And that's about it. I haven't gotten to that second beam yet, but this first one turned out so good, so I'm going to have to do it sometime very soon. And here's some final photos of my favorite spots on it. If you liked this video, please consider hitting subscribe. We are super close to a thousand subscribers, which is amazing, and we need your help to get there. Stay tuned for other awesome stuff that we have coming up. We do a little bit of everything here, and it's always an adventure, usually with a lot of mistakes, but that's what keeps it interesting. And speaking of mistakes, the spray paint did get through to the foam in a few places, but honestly, it kind of works, so I'm happy with it. Thanks for watching.